welcome to another edition of Highway 89, Utah's most scenic musical byway. I'm Eric Glissmeyer, and joining me in the studio this hour are several of the principal singers from Utah Lyric Opera's production of La Boheme. Giacomo Puccini composed La Boheme at the end of the 19th century after his sensationally successful opera Manon Lescaut. Success followed success, and La Boheme was a hit too. Productions were staged across Europe and in the United States, and today it's one of the most frequently performed operas in the world, and part of the reason for that is the universality of the plot. La Boheme is the time-old tale of young friends struggling to make ends meet and struggling with love. Here to bring these young bohemians to life for us now are Lisa Segmiller as Mimi the seamstress, Christopher Holmes singing the role of Marcello the painter, who's in love with Musetta, sung by Jenny Litster, and Colin Ramsey as Colline the philosopher. If you're familiar with La Boheme, you're probably wondering if I've forgotten about the tenor, Rodolfo. The answer is no, I haven't. The fact is that the tenor, Isaac Hurtado, couldn't make it today. Let's get into some music from Act One of La Boheme. Lisa Segmiller will sing Mi Chiamano Mimi, They Call Me Mimi.
cetro di me non lei saprà in orrore. Sono la sua vicina che la vien fuori d'ora a infortunare. Lisa Segmiller singing Mi Chiamano Mimi. This is Highway 89, a live performance program broadcast on Sirius XM 143 BYU Radio and Classical 89. I'm Eric Glissmeyer. Lisa Segmiller is a Tony Award-winning musician best known for her portrayal of Mimi in La Boheme on Broadway. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. There are bound to be people listening who hadn't heard until just a moment ago that La Boheme was ever performed on Broadway. Would you take just a moment and talk about that production? Absolutely. Uh, La Boheme on Broadway was uh, was quite a historic production. Um, Baz Luhrmann's intent was to bring opera back to its origins, which was really for the masses, for the people. And so the idea of bringing an opera, a greatly beloved opera by Puccini, that's so accessible, I think, in the beauty of its, uh, of the music, to Broadway, directed by a Hollywood film director, Baz Luhrmann, um, could really be accessible for the masses. And not only that, um, but he, his intent was, was to stage, um, stage it sort of like a film, like a black and white film. And the characters, the principals, were the only ones who were actually in color. So it was very interesting. And also he wanted specifically to cast the production with young singers in their early 20s to later 20s. So I was actually the youngest cast member at 23, which is pretty close to the actual character of Mimi. Um, and this is actually quite different from from a lot of other productions of Bohem, where normally given the um, requirements of opera, uh, it generally requires a much older or larger, um, heavier person to sing the demands of the opera to project over the audience and so this was this was somewhat um somewhat new of an idea to cast it all very young um and it was triple cast so that we didn't blow out our voices which was great um different so, than a lot of broadway yeah, ones where you're singing exactly what? where you're singing like nine shows yeah. a week <laughs> yeah so this was very doable for our voices and, and none of us actually blew out so that was a good thing good <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. What do you enjoy most about playing the character of Mimi? You know, I have to say that I love the music most of all. Um, Puccini is brilliant in the specificity in which he um, notates exactly what he wants. And if all you do is sing the music according to the way that he wrote it, therein you discover the character. And Mimi is quite a profound person. Um, she is simple in her appreciation of simple beauties in nature, like the sun, uh, the petals of a rose, the smell of a rose, which her first aria, her introduction aria, speaks a little bit about. Uh, but she also loves deeply, and she's deeply in, sen uh, in tune to her senses, to smells and sights and touch. Um, and of course, the love story with Rodolfo, is just so charming. Uh, he, I think, is her first love. Um, he brings her to life. He brings her world into color. Um, she embroiders flowers, and she says, you know, the, the flowers that I embroider don't have a smell. Uh, and yet, and, and this seems to be what her whole life was like. She was alone, and uh, sort of her world was in black and white, I think. And then when she meets Rodolfo, um, her world comes to life, and she understands what, what love truly is and what life truly is because of that. And that's just a beautiful, beautiful kind of story to portray. All right. Well, thank you, Lisa. Now it's time to introduce Stephen Dubberly. He's the music director of opera at North Texas University and a frequent lecturer for Dallas Opera. He's conducting Utah Lyric Opera's production of La Boheme and is at the piano this hour. We've asked him to take us through the plot of the opera, setting up the different arias and duets. So right now I'm going to turn the mic over to him and invite him to place the next piece, Musetta's Waltz, in context for us. Thank you. I'd be glad to. La Boheme has four acts, and uh, the aria that we heard previously that Lisa sang, Mimi's aria, is in act one, where we meet the Bohemians. 
La Boheme doesn't mean the Bohemian girl. La Boheme means Bohemianism. It's the way of life, the sort of hippie lifestyle that these guys lead. And we have met Rodolfo the painter, no, sorry, Rodolfo the writer, Marcello the painter, Schonard the musician, and Colline the philosopher. And the life that they lead of Bohemianism is one of uh, uh, intentional poverty, one of intentional uh, devoting their lives to art rather than uh, the perhaps uh, the professions of banking and law and things that their that their daddies do. So it's, it's there are many parallels, and uh, I think to uh, the 1960s in the United States. These are not poor guys. These are very well educated uh, boys who come from privilege, but have chosen this lifestyle. And then who we met then Mimi whom Rodolfo falls in love with. And what makes him fall in love with her, as we heard in that previous aria, is the, the simplicity. Uh, and Puccini is really playing games by even having arias in this, in this opera. He, following Wagner's uh, example, didn't even want to have set pieces called arias. And so it's a little misleading. What you mostly hear when you hear Bohème is this texture that's nonstop, where the, the drama, and the action unfolds rather precipitously and it's only in these very few moments where time stands still and the characters sing uh, from their heart. And in Act Two, then, we meet another female character, and that is the deadly Musetta. She is um, Marcello's on-again, off-again fling, and she shows up here in Act Two. This is Christmas Eve. The first two acts take place on Christmas Eve. First, uh, the guys meet Mimi, and she comes with them now to the Latin Quarter to celebrate Christmas Eve in a really bustling, very exciting, highly charged atmosphere. And Musetta shows up with an old man, an old rich man, who's clearly her patron. And she scandalizes everybody around her, but she is intent on capturing Marcello's attention. He's studiously ignoring her because he's secretly in love with her. So she just does a, an outright seduction aria. She just starts singing, and it's, it's, it's a performance, and the words are just absolutely remarkable. She says, I know that I'm beautiful, and I know that when people see me on the street, they just, they just stare at me with complete desire, and that desire makes me happy. And you who are ignoring me, I know that you're consumed for me as well and uh, you're suffering, and I'm glad.
Quando Men Vo, Musetta's Waltz from La Boheme by Puccini, sung by Jenny Litster with Stephen Deberly at the piano. I'm Eric Glissmeyer, and you're listening to Highway 89. Our guests today are singers from Utah Lyric Opera's production of La Boheme. Christopher Holmes is the artistic director of Utah, Utah Lyric Opera and sings the role of Marcello in their current production. He's performed over 35 roles with opera companies throughout the United States. Thanks for being here, Chris. Glad to be here. You've performed in quite a few productions of La Boheme over the years, always as Marcello? Not always as Marcello, a couple times as Marcello, but also as Shonar. I've covered Marcello, but most importantly, I've been the customs officer. Those are <laughs> very important lines in Act 3. Oh, yes. How many lines does the customs officer I have? Like two or three. <laughs> <laughs> one, of those, one of those little roles, yes, yeah. yes. And how did you meet up with Stephen Dubberly? I met up with Stephen. Uh, it's been a few years now, but we worked on a couple of productions together. The very first one was at Amarillo Opera, a uh, production of Don Giovanni. And then the very next season, same company, but this very opera, La Boheme. And then finally, down at San Antonio Opera, in another production of Don Giovanni. Well, we're glad you've connected with Stephen and, and glad to have him here. And right now we're going to turn time back over to Stephen Dubberly, who is conducting Utah Lyric Opera's production of La Boheme. He'll set up the next piece for us. Act three takes place a couple of months later, so end of February. And Mimi and Rodolfo are now together, and Mimi has come out uh, at the beginning of the day to find Marcello to beg him to help them. They're having problems in their relationship. And the way she describes it, he, uh, Rodolfo is just given to these uh, fits of rage, to passion, to insane jealousy. She talks here about how she pretends to be at sleep at night and feels him staring at her, that he seems to be driving her away. And he's, she's asking Marcello, for advice. And of course, Marcello is the last person in the world you would want to ask relationship advice <laughs> from. It turns out later in this scene, uh, after the part that, that we'll perform, that it's not really true. Rodolfo is doing this on purpose because he's so overcome with grief and helplessness because he knows that Mimi is terribly sick and that he is poor and can't support her. What happens here is the beginning of the unraveling of bohemianism. It's an it's a, a artificial state that can't continue when it comes up against the realities of life, poverty, cold. And in this very tender scene, we hear Mimi uh, really anguished about uh, her relationship with Marcello. It's one of the most beautiful, intimate moments in the opera. Mimi, speravo di trovarvi qui. E per siam qui don mese di quel ostale spese. Musetta insegna il canto ai passeggeri. Io pingo che guerrieri sulla facciata E freddo entrate C'è Rodolfo Sì Non posso entrare, no, no Perché Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm Eric Glissmeyer, and you're listening to Selections from La Boheme by Utah Lyric Opera on Highway 89. We just heard Christopher Holmes and Lisa Segmiller sing the Marcello Mimi duet from Act 3, and there's more music to come. Stephen Dubberley will continue to take us through Puccini's opera. What's next, Stephen? That's the beginning of Act 3. Rodolfo emerges then, and he and... Mimi do a sort of reconciliation. What they decide, because they truly love each other so much, but they know that she needs to get away from Rodolfo. They decide to stay together until April, until spring. They say, it's just too tough to go through a winter without each other. So act three ends in this very bittersweet note where Mimi and Rodolfo say, we'll stay together, but only until springtime. And that, of course, is counterpointed with a very lively uh, fight between Musetta and Marcello. This sec- selection that we'll hear is Mimi saying to Rodolfo, I'm leaving. What's so beautiful about Mimi's arias is that they are not only incredibly simple, they're about simple things. Puccini dares to make an aria, the first one that we heard, out of basically a young lady saying, well, my name's Mimi, and here's what I'm about. I'm not really fancy, but I like to sew, and uh, I like beautiful things. And I think he delighted in taking the inflated concept of an aria, which usually deals with great great subjects and uh, highly charged emotions, and putting them into this context of everyday life. And it is a kind, it is a manifestation of the school of thought that uh, Puccini belonged to, the school of verismo, which is that theater should be about real life. Verismo has a violent aspect to it, real life people (laughs) murdering each other and going into terrible rages, but also this aspect of verismo, the simple, the intimate, the, the quotidian, the everyday being what you can make an opera about. And in this incredibly beautiful scene, Mimi just says, I'm leaving, I'm going back to where I came from when I met you. Look, just uh, gather my things up and, and get the, the doorman to, to bring them to me. Don't forget uh, my little cross and my necklace and listen, uh, that pink bonnet that you bought me, this is the climax of the aria. If you want to keep that as a, as a souvenir of love, then you go right ahead. Goodbye. No hard feelings. So it's, it's incredibly low key. And out of this low key moment, Puccini creates, uh, something that is absolutely unforgettable. Oh, <laughs> 
Donde Lieta Ushi from La Boheme by Giacomo Puccini. Mimi sung by Lisa Segmiller. This is Highway 89. Nice to have you listening. I'm Eric Glissmeyer, joined now by Elizabeth Hansen, who is the director of Utah Lyric Opera's production of La Boheme. She's a Writers Guild Award winner and an Emmy-nominated screenwriter and has a long and impressive resume in theater. Hello, I Elizabeth. I do. It's so, <laughs> I'm even impressed with myself. Well, I'm just blown away. I, I'm hardly, it's hard for me to even stand here looking at it, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Last year, you directed Utah Lyric Opera's production of La Traviata and staged it in the 1950s. What era has been chosen for La Boheme? I chose right after World War II because um, Paris, France, all of Europe was just coming out of this this horrible experience um, under Nazi rule. And so I wanted something that 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 kind of oh I want I, I, I want to sound really intellectual, but I, I love the era and we I knew we had the costumes. You know, sometimes you have to just do the practical thing. When you do something like that, do you have to change? There's a reference, I know, to King uh, Luigi Filippo, Louis Philip II. Do you have to change that? You know, I just say, say it really fast. And oh, no one will hear it. And, you don't, and don't put it in the super title, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, exactly. opera directing is still fairly new for you. What do you enjoy about it? Oh, gal. Uh, I didn't, let's see. Um, the, I, I think probably the intensity of it. I remember when I was first kind of introduced and fell in love with opera. I was, uh, it, I was, it was early in in my university career, and and a friend of mine gave me a, a copy of Risa Stevens singing Carmen. And what I loved about opera, because I'm a musical theater baby, that's that's where and film, and that's where I come from. And all of a sudden, there was this world of of everything. It 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 embraced dance and music and this glorious singing. And I was captivated by it. And I think that's what still captivates me with, with directing it. I think I'm horribly inadequate at it, but I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if the cast members know this, but most of the reasons I stay awake at night is going, I have no idea what I'm doing. 
<laughs> and then it all comes together for you? You know, it really does. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait for rehearsal to start because once, once we're in rehearsal and we're all kind of speaking that same language, it all works itself out and it kind of goes, ah. Oh. Just starts to flow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Elizabeth Hansen, director of Utah Lyric Opera's La Boheme. And Stephen Dubberley is conducting this production. He's been taking us through the plot of the opera and setting up the different arias. We'll have him take us to the end of the opera now and introduce today's final piece, Vecchia Zimarra. This is act four, the final act. We begin with Rodolfo and Marcello, then joined by Shonar and Colline, uh, basically partying, whooping it up, having a good time, and then suddenly... Musetta shows up very panicked and says, I've got Mimi with me. Both of them have gone off at this point, uh, taken up with richer men who can take care of them. But Mimi now knows that she's dying. We have found out that she's terribly ill with tuberculosis. And now she knows she's dying. She's dragged herself along the streets and up to this garret apartment to die with Rodolfo. And this is the moment of great crisis and of great beauty as all the friends, all the Bohemian friends, instead of partying and whooping it up, confront their own lives very seriously. And it will end, of course, with Rodolfo and Mimi saying things to each other that they were never able to say before. The relationship is suddenly not so lighthearted, not so carefree and casual, and they swear love to each other. But in the moment we're going to hear now, Colline the philosopher, who's a remarkable character, a really intelligent guy, always reading, uh, very, very literate, and just a wonderful sense of humor. He, he's, he really makes a lot of great puns uh, throughout the opera. But we hear him now doing something uh, very, very kind and very sacrificial. He has a coat that he loves very, very much, not only because it helps keep him warm, but because it's got big pockets where he can put all sorts of philosophy books uh, and read them in his spare time. So he has decided to pawn his beloved coat in order to buy some medicine, hoping that that will uh, prolong Mimi's life a bit. So this is a really cute and, and uh, tender aria. Farewell to my old coat, my old friend, I tell you goodbye. We are so fortunate in this production to have the quality of singers uh, that we've had here today uh, and some experienced singers who've done these roles before. We also have uh, a remarkable young man, Colin Ramsey, uh, who's very, very young, although has already quite a bit of experience singing all over the world. Fantastic voice, fantastic actor, and he is bringing to life this part of uh, this role of Colline, and we're very thrilled to have him singing Farewell to My Old Coat.
The Coat Aria, Vecchia Zimarra, from La Boheme by Puccini, sung by Colin Ramsey. And that concludes another edition of Highway 89. This hour featured the music of Puccini's La Boheme with singers from Utah Lyric Opera, Lisa Hopkins, Segmiller, Mimi, Christopher Holmes, Marcello, Jenny Litster, Musetta, Colin Ramsey, Colline, Stephen Dubberley, conductor of the production and the pianist for this hour, and Elizabeth Hansen, director. A big thank you to our guests for coming and singing so beautifully for us this hour, and good luck with the production. Utah Lyric Opera is a company based in Utah Valley that introduces individuals of all ages to the beauty, literature, culture, and history of opera and musical theater. For information about the company, you can visit utahlyric.org. Past seasons at Utah Lyric Opera have included major concerts and opera productions at Provo City's Covey Center for the Arts. We're always glad to hear from our listeners. We welcome your comments and questions by email at highway89 at byu.edu. Highway 89 is a production of BYU Broadcasting in Provo, Utah. The recording engineer is Mark Waite, and the show's producer is Jackie Tataishi. And I'm Eric Glissmeyer. Thanks for listening.